to worship this morning on this the day the day or we've lost Annette up here and she's making me giggle um, the day that the Lord has made for us this day a couple brief announcements and let's see if I remember to go in order with these uh, we will start our Lenten Bible study tonight at 6.30 here at uh, Mount Lebanon it will be Probably, dang, <laughs> um, uh, it'll be probably in the Bible study room right behind the sanctuary here. I do have the workbooks. I did get notice that the, the actual books are on back order. I do have a couple extra copies that we can share, but uh, as soon as those get in, those will be distributed. But the, the sense of the study can be done through just reading of the scriptures and just uh, meditating with the time and the questions in the workbook. So uh, uh, that again will be at 6.30 this evening. United Methodist Women will be Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Debbie will have the program on prayer and self-denial. So uh, kind of an on-point topic for this time of year. So... And choir rehearsal will resume this Wednesday at 7 p.m. <laughs> Quick with the slides. <laughs> this Wednesday, you, you've got a fat finger back there with the slides. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., choir rehearsal will resume in the choir uh, room or in here or wherever Scarlett decides to hold it. And uh, we're hoping that we might be able to get to get, get some uh, special music for Palm Sunday and Easter, uh, specifically uh, for, through that. Our next council planning session will be April 7th. Notice the day change. There was a vote at the last council meeting that Mondays were not working for everybody as they did in the past. So we have... <laughs> we have changed... No, we'll, we're okay. Uh, but uh, there was a vote taken at the last council meeting that Mondays were no longer working for a majority of those that were in attendance through because of various other stuff going on. So it was uh, decided and voted upon to move our council meetings to Thursday evenings uh, from now on. So uh, mark that in your calendar uh, that our council meetings will now be on Thursdays. Are there any other church-related announcements that need to be made. The organ has been done. Everything was really nice and the books were good. Everybody's books are laying on the table in the library. Thank you, treasures of all the accounts. Our job is very easy. From Martha Jane, the audit has been completed and all of our treasures, your uh, checkbooks, <laughs> Don't, don't go far, I still need you. <laughs> uh, the audit has been completed and uh, um, everything turned out good. Thank you to all of our treasurers for such a good job that they do. And uh, you may pick up your materials in the library following service today if you are here. Are there any other announcements? Before who knows what will come on our screens. <laughs> Then let us enter into a time of worship this morning with the passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you today and every day. And also with you. Join me in prayer. Lord, as we are gathered here today to praise you, Lord, praise Jesus Christ, praise each and every moment that we have with you, Lord. Guide our hearts, guide our minds, and guide ourselves. Lord, you have brought us together. You have brought our riches with us in our tithes and our offerings and our giving, Lord. Bless that, that it will be used for your mission, that it will be used to further your love, that it will be used in ways that we may not even understand at this moment in time. But Lord, you have an idea for us. You have a way that you want us to be guided. And may we, as your children, be guided 
that very way. This day and every day. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now this morning we are going to do something, try something a little different. We're going to do two opening uh, praise songs to open our worship service uh, this morning. The first will be, Lord, I lift your name on high. The second will be, He is exalted. The uh, words will be on the screens for both. So please stand if you are able and join us. I've lost all control. <laughs> join us in song. How good it is to hear laughter in our church.
for prayer requests, praise reports, and updates on situations in our community. Um, if you did not receive the all call yesterday, uh, we lost a uh, brother yesterday at evening in uh, Bill Glenn. So uh, be with that family um, uh, as they are still grieving the loss of Sue and now have to grieve the loss of Bill. So be with the entire Glenn family in prayer uh, over these next few days. And as arrangements are made, I will uh, share them in all of my ways capable. So um, are there others this morning? Yes, Anita. Um, a very good phrase. Eric came home yesterday. Um, we have a lot to deal with, um, me you know, meditations and everything else, but uh, he's home, and I think we've gotten a little brighter, but um, <laughs> he's home. Thanks be to God. Yes, it's a great phrase to have Eric home, and although these next few days and weeks and even months may be very challenging at times, we know that He's in God's hands, and God has brought him through everything that he has been through and will continue to do so. So, glory be to God. Are there others? Yes, Jan. Um, keep Yoshi in your prayers. He is going to have to travel to Japan to settle his, his parents. Yoshi has uh, yes, traveled to Japan to settle up, settle up some family estates. Are there others? This is going to be an odd request. Last Saturday, even though my back hurt so bad, I couldn't stand it. I went to look for gas logs because my mother decided to go off and they won't come on. Everywhere I went, everywhere I called, we've got the burners, but we don't have the logs. We've got the logs, but we don't have the burners. So finally I just looked at one of the gentlemen and I said, excuse me, when are you going to get both of them together? And he said, it might be a year. When I went out of the store, my friend Susie said, Betsy, don't cry. I know you've been through everything today. I said, if I did, it wouldn't be for the gas logs. It would be for the way the world is right now. Amen. And it just really dawned on me how bad things are getting. And I'm ashamed to say it dawned on me then. Because we really, really don't think about it when we see it on TV or hear it. Until we actually some way experience a tiny little bit of it. Amen. 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 Now, on that note... Uh, Please raise up in your prayers each and every night. Those in the Ukrainian, in, in the Ukraine and, and Russia and all of the areas that are being affected by this, this war that has been started by one side. Are there others? Pastor. <laughs> Help a lot. I just want to. Oh. <laughs> okay, the devil's already trying. Already this morning, he's been trying. But I just want to praise the Lord for uh, that the devil didn't win this morning, and that I got to come to church because I really didn't want to come to Sunday school this morning. And God had me to call uh, Ann, and I praise God for her, and also the Sunday school class for all of you. But she said, Judy, come on. This is where you need to be at for people that love you. And I just praise God for this church. And I have an unspoken prayer as well. Just remember my family now. The devil's fit in the family again. And it was already put back together after the two years when my mom passed away. So my sister and I was back together. It's not her, but the other family. So let's just remember. And I just want to thank God that he led me to this church and that he gave us a pastor that preaches the word and not only preaches word, but believe it. Amen. I would like to also request prayer for Danny Harris. Uh, he is a driver that I work with. He is in his 40s. He has pancreatic cancer. Uh, he's already had surgery, uh, waiting for his body to heal that he can start a very aggressive uh, chemo. And I'd just like to keep him in our thoughts and prayers and just know how glad.
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Great. Great to see you back here, Monty. Even though we don't have baseball to watch in the afternoon. No, I'll you back on that. I'm glad to see you at Daniel and Graham. Has he caught up to you yet? Huh? Has he caught up to you yet? He probably is. <laughs> Me and Martha James, so we're the Marthas. I gave him a hug and he's not quite there yet. Uh, <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you on the show. Yes. Good to be here. Glad to have faces that we haven't seen in a while start coming back as things are getting a little more safe to be back. So, are there others? Let's go. Lord, we come to you. We come to you in our times of praise for what you have been able to do in our lives. What you do in our daily lives, even though at the moment we may not give it credit to you, Lord, when we look back, we know you have had every hand involved in each and every one of those situations, Lord. And we thank you and praise you and give you all the glory. Lord, we come to you when we have times of need, when we have friends and family that are sick, when we have friends and family that are grieving, when we have friends and family of your family, Lord, of the family of God, Lord, that are going through things that we as human beings were never designed to go through, Lord. With medical treatments, with recoveries with whatever it may be, Lord. We know that your hands are in each and every one of those situations before we even lifted them up today because, Lord, we know that you are in and of our bodies every second of every day, Lord. Guide those that take care of us, our caregivers, our nurses, our medical teams, Lord, that they would be guided by you in ways that they know and see you and put you into the treatment of our bodies, your bodies, Lord. Give our experts that extra nudge. Be with those that need comforting. Set your hand of comfort upon them, whether it is a loss of today or a loss of years and years ago, Lord. Your comforting hand does so much more than ours as human hands can ever do, Lord. Send your comforting hand down upon those that need to be comforted. Ease the worry, ease the anxiety, ease the fear that is in the hearts and minds and souls of those on this earth, Lord. And be with those that are in the Ukrainian region, Lord. Guide them. Let them know that you are there even in the presence of evil. You, Lord, are there. You are helping guide those missionaries to get them out. You are helping guide the refugee exodus, Lord. You are our first refugee that we have saved, Lord. And may each and every one of these refugees have a story to tell just like yours, Lord. Guide them through this. Guide the folks that are taking them in and allow them to see beyond what is on the surface to know that you, Lord, are in and of each of these human beings. Send your love, not war, to these people. Allow love to come over the folks in Poland and other regions that are accepting these refugees to know that they will be cared for with your heart, with your hands, and with your soul, Lord. Guide us here in the United States to do what we can do here, half a world away, to encourage that, that is done in a godly manner, Lord. Continue to oversee our leaders. Continue to be in the hearts, minds, and souls of our leaders as decisions are made as to what we, we can do to stop this without entering into full combat with this, Lord. Allow us as your children to be your children, to live like your children, and to be of Jesus Christ each and every day. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Excuse me, I need to drink real quick. 
Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 4 and begins in verse 1. And it reads, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days. And when they were over, when those 40 days were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority. For it has been given over to me, and I will give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. And then the devil took him to Jerusalem, and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thank you, God. Lord, guide me through this message. Allow me to be set aside and only be a vessel, a voice for your words today and every day. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Opportunity. That is what our title is today. It comes from the 13th verse in our lesson. Until an opportune time. But that opportune time for us begins every single day. For many of us, Lent started on Wednesday with the service of Ash Wednesday, with the imposition of ashes, with an entrance into the Lenten season. For others, today marks their kind of unofficial start into the Lenten season as the pyramids have been changed to dazzling, dazzling, Purple. The swags have been hung on the crosses. There's something different about this season. There's a, it's like we have something to look forward to on the horizon, even though we know it is not all positive on the horizon because we know the entire story. But we know this season is something special. And we know these days are something special. Opportunity has two options. One is temptation. Temptation where you are sucked into the world's issues. You are brought in and, and sucked up like a vacuum and you can concentrate on nothing more than what is happening in the world at this exact moment in time. The other, the other, is we have an opportunity to grow our faith, to grow and develop new practices of faith, new ways our faith can be invigorated inside of us. Now, it is our choice which side we choose on that opportunity. I would hope that our free will, our ability to choose, directs us to choose those magical 40 days of Lent, and learn new self-denial and prayer and postures and whatnot throughout this time. Our scripture today is a narrative that we've all heard, but it is a narrative that gives us an overview of what Lent is about. We find Jesus going into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, not far, it is believed, from the River Jordan. These 40 days and 40 nights were not easy at all. 
Our scripture tells us that Jesus was tempted. And as I read it, I believe Jesus was tempted in each of these 40 days in some way, shape, or form. We are given a few examples, but I believe that Jesus, just like us, was tempted every single day that he was in the wilderness, that he was away from everybody else, that he was not consuming anything. But he was tempted by what is translated by as the devil to do things and try things and be somebody that he is not. But instead what the devil, as it's translated, wants him to be. Jesus is even challenged with his own words, with his own teachings. And Jesus gives those great responses that Jesus always gives. That, of, of, for instance, when the devil challenged him to turn the stone into bread, Jesus give, gives him the answer, man does not live on bread alone. How awesome is that? And also, how passive-aggressive is that also? The man does not live on bread alone. He didn't need the nutrients of the physical bread to survive this time. He had the nutrients of the Lord running through him each and every moment to know that he was going to be okay. <clears throat> Jesus continues to be tempted by the Spirit. Not by the good Spirit, by the evil Spirit. We are only given a few of those confrontations. We are only given a glimpse into those 40 days in our scripture from Luke. But I can imagine that so many occurred, that these were some of the worst aggressors of that time. But even being tempted to eat each and every day when he was there specifically fasting would be a temptation. We are all in our own wilderness journeys, just like Jesus was in the wilderness here, though not in such glorious places like down by the River Jordan in the wilderness. Instead, we are in our own wilderness journeys, in our own communities, in our own lives right now. This world is a wilderness journey right now. Every day we wake up and wonder what has happened somewhere in this world. Every day we wonder what evil presence has come about while we have been in slumber. Every day we, as God's children, hurt because of all of the hurt that is happening in this world. Now we can't, for the most part, set ourselves a place in the woods, in the wilderness, away from everybody else in this life that we live. We have families that depend on us. We have friends that depend on us. We have people that depend on us. We have bills that have to be paid, so we have to go to work sometimes. But what we can do in this season is set aside just a little bit extra time. And I'm not asking to set aside a huge block of your day. Moments are better than nothing. We read, we read in our Ash Wednesday's scripture. We find read in our Ash Wednesday's scripture. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Now that line sticks with me. That line sticks with me with our opportunity. Idea of opportunity. We have an opportunity in our lives to go into secret or go into a private space, go somewhere where only we and the Lord are seen together. Hey, that might be our dining room table. Wherever it may be where you are able to do this pious action of scripture reading, devotional reading, studying, whatever it may be in your particular journey. We're not required to tell each and every one that we're doing it. Because when we tell each and every one that we're doing it, we're getting our reward, reward on this earth. We're getting our reward on this side instead of on the eternal side. We're getting 
our feather in our cap, our pat on the back, on this side, the human side. And that's not what we're called to do. We're called to be in relationship with. Instead, we are called to be in relationship with God by ourselves. And I know it even sounds weird, but we even need to do this away from our families, our own personal family. Yes, there is great importance in having a Bible study time or a time of reading with family. But we also, as individuals, need to connect with God on our own to know what we are supposed to be saying to our children, what we are supposed to be giving our children, what we are supposed to be allowing our children to do per what the Lord is telling us. We have been in a world of 24-7 news for too long, where we think that everything needs to be out there. And maybe that's why a lot of folks give up social media for specifically as a practice for Lent, because it allows us to take that time, it allows us to take that time to be back in secret with God, back in a place, in a relationship that is back to one-on-one -on -one instead of one-on-a-million. A place that God calls us to be each and every day. Now, as you're practicing these practices, please, 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 do not do anything that is going to hurt your physical or mental health. We often talk about fasting as a practice for Lent. But if you are not medically able to fast, you are not seen in the eyes of God as some, somewhat lower. I medically can't fast. That's just not possible for me. Because I can't do that, that doesn't bring me down a notch in God's eyes. Instead, I do a different practice. And don't use this as a time to give up caffeine or nicotine or other addictive substances, cold turkey. Please wean off those or see medical professionals to have a way, if, it, if the Lord is moving you to do that in this time, Please see somebody that can help you wean off of those substances as to not do harm to yourself or to others. God's eyes see each and everything that we do. Whether we like it or not, God is with us and watching us each step we take and each moment we are in this world. The healthiest way we can do that and live into what God is telling us to do is to follow the journey through Christ of these 40 days. In this world, we have an opportunity to walk through these 40 days with Christ or against Christ. If you have not be begun this walk, this journey of Lent, use this time today, use this meal today as a way of starting this practice of Holy Lent sharing a meal together, not only with our congregational family, but the family of God and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself, may be a stepping stone for us to begin to live the life that God has placed in our Lenten journey this year. Amen? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for forty days and forty nights, you bore up the ark and the waters. Save Noah and his family and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for forty days and forty nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still, small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted forty days and forty nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. Now when, when we, your people, when, let me start over. Now when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us into repentance for sin and cleansing of our hearts. That these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. And on the night in which he gave himself up, he took the bread, gave it to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of the sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make that for us to be the body and blood of Christ. And that we be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through, Je through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. As you're instructed to do so, come forward to the altar table and receive your elements. I recommend you shake the cup as you return to your seat. When, you have, when everyone has completed this and has returned to their seats,
Please remain standing as you are able, and we will partake in the elements together as a family of God gathered this morning. Come to this table. You who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this table often, and you who have not been in a very long time. And you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites you to meet him here. Come. If you haven't already done so, please remove the top seal to reveal the wafer. The body of Christ, given for all to partake as a gift and as a blessing, asking nothing in return. Amen? Please remove the second seal to reveal the juice. The blood of Christ shed for each and every one of us for the new forget for the new covenant of forgiveness each and every day. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into this world in the strength of your spirit, 
to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
soul. Mm -hmm. I hope that you're, you are well with your souls as well. If not, then use these time, this time, this season of Lent, to reconnect, to get your soul where you want it to be, where God wants it to be, where it should be, friends. Please rise. Receive this benediction. Lord, as we want our souls to be aligned with you, we want our all in all to be exalted by you and by everything that you have taught us. May we redirect those moments in our lives, those moments that come up day after day, moment after moment, and may they be realigned with you and your teachings instead of the world and the world's teachings. May you guide us as we go forth to do just that, to have a well soul, a guided heart, and a mind set on you, Lord. Amen?